Okay. So how do we measure strain, right? You know, when, you, when our beam is vibrating back and forth, those ha things are happening very quickly, uh, and there's no obvious way to see uh, or measure those. Well, what we do is we attach a material to the material we're interested in that allows us to create a duplicate strain in our sensor. Okay, so what a strain gauge is essentially a really long wire that's lapped back and forth, and we attach that to the material such that when the material deforms, when it changes its length, the surface of that beam changes its length, the length of this wire changes as well. Uh, and we can then use an equation for the resistance of a wire uh, and recognize that when that wire is stretched or compressed, each of these is going to change. This is the length of the wire. This is the cross-sectional area of the wire. So if I stretch out a wire, it's going to have a smaller cross-sectional area. And this guy here is the resistivity of a particular metal. So this is a material component. All three of these change if I put that wire under strain. Okay. So the resistance of my wire is going to change because I've attached it to this straining material. Uh, and a gauge, uh, just to give you some sense of the small, smallness of these gauges, the, that wire is tiny, which means it ha gives that, that's what gives it some resistance, right? A small cross-sectional area, like a small pipe, uh, it's hard to get a current through that. And it's also very long, and so because we lap it back and forth a bunch, uh, we increase, we multiply essentially the change in length uh, because every section here, if I, if I lengthen this out in this direction, every section of this wire is going to get lengthened. And so we multiply um, that change in length for the wire. Now, strain gauges, you can imagine that wire uh, is is difficult to manufacture, so it's not really a wire in the sense uh, that we think of it. But in fact, it's uh, it's photo etched. It's etched with light onto onto foil, and so this gives you a picture of what a strain gauge looks like. And these are the ends of the wire, and we attach these to our um, to our Wheatstone bridge. Uh, but we want that gauge length to be small this length here, right? If we make it bigger, it makes our changes in L bigger um, and makes it a little easier to measure resistance. Uh, but if we make it small, it means we can resolve, oh, this is exactly where that strain is happening. Okay, so we want that gauge length to be small. Uh, we wanna make sure that our glue, our backing, clearly attaches that wire to the surface that we're interested in. We can't have any stretch there, right? Or that the actual change in the wire length and the strain gauge length won't match what's happening to the material of interest. And we want it to be really low mass because we want this, if we're going to measure the vibration of a beam, we want to be able to get changes in this resistance that happen very, very quickly. And just a last point, we'll also use a load cell uh, in our labs and a load cell um, measures force rather than the strain. It measures stress uh, or allows us to measure stress. And so we can um, do that with a strain gauge. And so you think about a, a load cell that looks something like this. Um, if I apply a force here, that's going to deform this metal. Okay. If I deform that metal, and I put some strain gauges in uh, ideal locations, I'll be able to figure out how much strain there is, uh, and that allows me you know, uh, to do some analysis and figure out how much force there is. And so a, a, a load cell is essentially um, just a tool that uses strain gauges to figure out what forces are. This guy down here is what we use in class, and it's not built in the same way, but it has strain gauges uh, that are acting in a similar way. There are other kinds of load cells. You can uh, think about it. One's called a capacitive load cell, which is pretty cool because it presses some plates together and you know that a, a capacitor um, 
changes its capacitance when the two plates of the capacitor get closer together or farther apart. Uh, and that allows us, again, if we set up a, a circuit to measure uh, any changes in the capacitance of our load cell, and then we can uh, figure out a sensitivity that tells us what the force is being applied. Okay, so a load cell is a different instrument than a strain gauge, but we use strain gauges in it uh, in order to measure force rather than just strain.